H.R. 2501, the Spectrum Coordination Act. Due to COVID-19 public health emergency, members can participate in today's markup either in person or remotely via online video conferencing. Members, staff, and members of the press present in the hearing room must wear a mask in accordance with the updated guidance issued by the attending physician. For members participating remotely, your microphones will be set on mute for the purpose of eliminating inadvertent background noise. Members participating remotely will need to unmute your microphone each time you wish to speak. Please note that once you unmute your microphone, anything that is said in WebEx will be heard over the loudspeakers in the committee room and subject to be heard by the live stream and C-SPAN. Additionally, I ask that members participating remotely use the raised hand feature of the software platform when you wish to be recognized, including to give an opening statement or to offer an amendment. After you are recognized to speak, please use the lower hand feature of the software platform so that I know you no longer are seeking recognition. During voice votes, members participating remotely will need to unmute yourself so that we can hear your response. During recorded votes, you will need to unmute yourself once your name is called to respond to the clerk. In responding to the clerk, I ask that just instead of saying aye or no, that you respond with a phrase like, Mike Doyle from Pennsylvania votes aye. Although I would say Mike Doyle from Pennsylvania votes yes. Uh, this will provide additional time for the voting member to be identified and made visible on the platform. Since members are participating from different locations at today's markup, all recognition of members, including for opening statements and amendments, will be in the order of subcommittee seniority. During this markup, amendments will be sent to members electronically. Members participating in person should not bring paper copies of their amendments to the clerk's desk. If a member participating in person would like a paper copy of an amendment or bill, please alert staff during the consideration of the amendment or bill. Amendments and motions should be sent to Chloe Rodriguez and Perry Hamilton and documents for the record to Joe Orlando at the email addresses that we have provided to staff. With that, I will now recognize myself for five minutes for an opening statement. Well, good morning and welcome to all of my colleagues. Today, we will consider two bills, the Spectrum Coordination Act and the Data Mapping to Save Moms Lives Act. One will help improve our broadband networks, and the other will help us better understand how broadband affects health outcomes and give policymakers direction as to where to prioritize support for broadband connectivity. Collectively, these consensus bills will further the important work that this committee has been undertaking on broadband access and adoption. As it is not the broadband service itself, but the connectivity it brings that is so important. And that's why the Data Mapping to Save Moms Lives Act is relevant today. We should examine how connectivity can better women's health. I applaud my colleagues for their bill and their focus on maternal health. I also look forward to the action on the Bipartisan Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. This bill will make unprecedented investments in our nation's broadband networks and expand connectivity to dramatically reduce the digital divide. The networks that are funded by the bill will pay dividends far into our future. Now, the ranking member said at our legislative hearing that this committee should have been provided an opportunity to shape this significant broadband policy. I agree with his comments. We should still strive to improve upon these programs, and a perfect example is the Spectrum Innovation Act. I continue to believe as do stakeholders from the public interest community and broadband providers, that this bill strengthens the spectrum provisions in the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. As we did before our legislative hearing, and as we do now, we await and would welcome our colleagues' input. It is nevertheless a positive sign that within this committee, we can move a modest spectrum proposal with a bipartisan substitute amendment. The Spectrum Coordination Act requires NTIA and the FCC to update their memorandum of understanding on spectrum coordination. It is vitally important that the processes of spectrum management and allocation are transparent, predictable, undertaken with the input and support of stakeholders, and definitive. Because these processes are policy, 
When policymakers do not provide certainty and speak with clarity on these issues, when there are last minute objections, and yes, when the expert committee's voice is not heard early and often, it is more difficult for federal spectrum users, broadband providers, and equipment manufacturers to utilize our nation's spectrum resources in the most efficient manner. Ensuring efficient use of spectrum and laying the groundwork for robust deployment of broadband networks for consumers and the private sector is a paramount function of this committee. In that vein, I look forward to moving the bills before us today and to continue working on communication policies that further the public interest going forward. Uh, and that concludes my opening statement, and now it is uh, with great pleasure that I recognize my friend and colleague, Mr. Latta, the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Communications and Technology, for five minutes for his opening statement. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And before I do uh, make my opening statement, I just want to congratulate you on your announcement uh, that, well, maybe I shouldn't say congratulate you because we're going to miss you on, on announcing that you're going to retire. It's been, uh, I can't believe it's been over three years just about now that we've worked together on this, uh, on this subcommittee. Uh, I've always liked working with you, and uh, so we're going to miss you. So I appreciate all your time that you've done here in the House and also on the Energy and Commerce Committee. We just want to wish you all the best of luck for the years to come. Now I want to turn to today's hearing. I'm pleased to support the two bills before us, uh, H.R. 2501, Mr. Bilirakis' Spectrum Coordination Act, and H.R. 1218, Mr. Butterfield's Data Mapping to Save Moms Lives Act. Both pieces of legislation require updates that will help better inform spectrum and broadband policy decisions. Mr. Bilirakis' Spectrum Coordination Act takes an important step to strengthen interagency coordination between the National Telecommunication and Information Administration and the Federal Communications Commission on spectrum policy decisions. It is critical that these agencies have robust communication, share agency necessary information when they are making important spectrum management decisions. This bill directs NTIA and the FCC to update their memorandum of understanding to improve upon the process for resolving frequency allocation disputes in shared or adjacent allocations. As the demand for spectrum resources grow, we are seeing the tension between the federal agencies and private industry rise. The only way we can be sure to make spectrum sources available to private industry while protecting critical federal spectrum systems is to make sure both agencies have the information. Mr. Butterfield's Data Mapping to Save Moms Lives Act would direct the FCC to work with the CDC to incorporate publicly available data on maternal mortality and severe maternal morbidity into its existing mapping broadband health in America tool. This data may paint a picture that gives appropriate healthcare agencies an understanding of what role, if any, broadband may play in improving outcomes. Both of these bills benefit from bipartisan discussion since the legislative hearing, and I'm pleased to support them moving forward to the full committee. I'd also like to make a comment um, as, um, you know, this committee has worked historically uh, on spectrum policy issues in a bipartisan way. Unfortunately, uh, we saw that the majority chose to push their spectrum auction language through the reconciliation process without consulting Republicans prior to the introduction, which is why we weren't able to support that bill at that time. In fact, this committee has not had a serious spectrum hearing since October 29th, 2019 in relation to the C-band spectrum auction. And as always, we'd be happy to work with you on authorizing an auction of critical mid-band spectrum going forward, and I'd hope that we could hear from all the affected stakeholders. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. The chair now recognizes Mr. Pallone the uh, chairman of the full committee, for five minutes for his opening statement. Thank you, Chairman Doyle. Today, the Communications and Technology Subcommittee will consider two bills. We'll begin with H.R. 1218, the Data Mapping to Save Moms Live Act, which was introduced by Representatives Butterfield, Bilirakis, and Blunt Rochester. This bipartisan legislation would help us consider how we might target connectivity. Is, you, you know, when you... Is that... Oh. This bipartisan uh, legislation would help us consider how we might target connectivity measures and telehealth services to vulnerable populations and communities at risk so that we can reduce maternal morbidity and mortality. 
and the bill highlights what the COVID-19 pandemic has shown, the importance of access to fast, reliable, and affordable broadband. For pregnant women, access to telehealth services like routine checkups, health monitoring, and updated prescriptions can go a long way in ensuring the health and safety of both the mother and the child. And this is important bipartisan legislation because sadly and inexcusably, the US has the highest rate of maternal mortality amongst the developed nations. Maternal mortality and morbidity are problems that affect women throughout the nation, but especially in black and Native American communities. And maternal mortality rates for black women are three times higher than those of white women, while the rate of death for American Indian and Alaska Native women is two times higher. So the bill requires the FCC to integrate data related to maternal health, including mortality and severe morbidity, morbidity into its connectivity maps. And this will help us better understand the communications barriers that some women face so that we can then explore connectivity policies that help keep these women healthy and safe. Improving maternal health is a priority of this committee, and that's why we included long overdue resources and support in the Build Back Better Act. If connectivity can also improve maternal health, we should take steps to make that happen. The second bill um, is H.R. 2501, the Spectrum Coordination Act, which was introduced by Representative Bill Arrakis. It requires the NTIA and the FCC to update a 2003 Memorandum of Understanding on Spectrum Coordination. Spectrum is obviously the key to unlocking next generation wireless networks that hold so much promise to better our lives. And this technology has the potential to promote enhanced telehealth services and educational opportunities, as well as new ways of engaging in entertainment and e-commerce. It can also help us make advancements in manufacturing and improve critical public safety communications that save lives. But it must be managed competently and correctly. And unfortunately, that was not what we experienced during the Trump administration. Instead, we watch as the FCC and the NTIA, the two agencies charged by Congress to manage the public's airways, often bickered and refused to coordinate their efforts. And in order for our nation to continue to lead the wireless technology, the government must speak with one voice. So with the Biden administration, I'm confident we can move beyond interagency disagreements, even as the, uh, as the uh, leadership continues to, to clean up some of these things. So I just want to say that revisiting the 2003 MOU and its updating, it is necessary. It's one step in the process, process but it won't be enough. But an updated MOU will reaffirm the commitment of these two agencies to provide and allocate spectrum in a way that will best serve consumers, commercial carriers, and federal agencies. And I want to commend Chairman Doyle and Representative Bill Rockus for their bipartisan work on getting this bill ready for markup. Now, I had hoped to consider more bills today, and I was disappointed that we weren't able to come together on other legislation that generally enjoys bipartisan support in this committee. And that's legislation pertaining to issues like spectrum auctions, and the Universal Service Fund. These are bipartisan, but for whatever reason, we haven't been able to come to agreement on the additional bills in these areas. So hopefully, we can still do that on other bills soon, and look forward to today's markup, Chairman, and, and all that you've done to advance these proposals, Mr. Chairman Doyle. Thank you. Gentleman yields back. Uh, the Chair now recognizes Mrs. Rogers, the ranking member of the full committee, for five minutes for her opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I too want to say congratulations on your announcement about retiring. Appreciate your service and your work on this great committee, especially on this subcommittee. And I know that it's not, it's not the end yet. We still have another year to go and lots of important issues to address. Today we're going to be considering two bills from our recent legislative hearing that have bipartisan support. This committee has a rich history of bipartisanship, especially on the subcommittee on communications and technology. We've has historically held educational hearings on spectrum management, robocalls, and broadband mapping, and we're all anxious to get back to that committee process. Regarding the bills we're considering today, H.R. 2501, Mr. Bill Spectrum Coordination Act will strengthen the interagency coordination between NTIA and the FCC regarding spectrum management decisions. As the United States continues to lead in wireless innovation, we must make sure that NTIA and the FCC coordinate to achieve balanced spectrum policies. We'll also be considering Mr. Butterfield's Data Mapping to Save Moms' Lives Act, which would direct the FCC to incorporate publicly available information about maternal um, mortality and severe maternal um, morbidity 
health outcomes into an existing FCC mapping platform. Mr. Chairman, these are good steps forward, but there's many other pieces of legislation that were, that were in the hearing but not considered today. One is my bill, H.R. 5028, the Isaac Alerting Act, which would require the FCC to identify any technical bar barriers to implementing an Isaac alerting system nationwide. In my district, a, man, uh, a mom who founded the Isaac Foundation in memory of her son worked with local first responders in Spokane to develop a community-based first responder training program. It was designed to improve how first responders help individuals with disabilities. As our nation works to upgrade our 911 networks to the next generation, we should examine if new technology may, be, it may enable this type of a alerting system in more communities across the country. Also, I'd like to note, Mr. Chairman, just last week under President Biden's watch, FAA officials spoke to the Wall Street Journal for an article about their concerns with the 5G network interfer interference with flight operations. Specifically, they are concerned about interference with altimeters in the C-band. This is an issue that the industry, the FCC, and the FAA were working out with expert engineers through an interagency process before the FAA went public with this story. They're not partisan issues, so I hope we'll continue working together to address concerns about spectrum interference. We all benefit from the robust discussions within this subcommittee, the Communications and Technology Portfolio, through hearings with different stakeholders, and I hope to continue that work with the majority to resolve any differences on the bills that are not included in this markup. I look forward to supporting the two bills before us today. I encourage all my colleagues to do likewise, and I yield back. Thank you. Thank the general lady. Uh, let me just say that um, uh, I know the general lady uh, expressed her desire to have her bill in the markup today, and we tried to get this bill ready for today, but it just wasn't ready. Uh, as recently as last week, uh, committee majority staff was working with minority staff to resolve extensive technical assistance provided by the FCC on the ranking member's bill. But uh, it came to our attention that a prominent nationwide disability rights organization expressed deep and significant concerns and opposition to the bill. Uh, and we learned this after minority committee staff represented that this group was supportive of the bill. So uh, I, I wanna find a way to move forward on your bill. Uh, but I think we still have some work to do on it. And uh, I will assure the ranking member that uh, we're looking forward to working with you so that we can move that process forward. I would also say that I hope the NTIA <clears throat> is the agency that makes decisions on spectrum and that individual agencies like the FAA and DOD and others uh, don't, you know, holding press conference isn't the way to get this done. So I hope we can get that worked out too. And with the new director there, maybe we can get that process started. So uh, now we uh, will allocate three minutes for anyone that wishes to make an opening statement. We'll start on the Democratic side of the aisle. Is there anyone seeking recognition to make an opening statement? Okay, seeing none. Uh, are there any members of the Republican side that wish to make an opening statement? Mr. Chair, I'd like to be recognized. Gentleman's recognized for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to yield my three minutes to the ranking member, Ms. McMorris Rogers. Thank you. Thank, I thank the gentleman for yielding, and, and I'd like to just address the, the Isaac bill. And I do hope, I appreciate the chairman's comments, and I appreciate the commitment to working through the details on this bill. I think this bill could really make a difference in people's lives and especially improve the relationship between local law enforcement when responding to a situation either in a home or in the community where they're dealing with an individual with a disability. Uh, this legislation was shared with the majority in early August uh, just to let the committee know how it has worked successfully in in Spokane and communities in Eastern Washington. We had a hearing one month ago, and we received the feedback on Friday uh, as to the concerns. Uh, I would just note that we didn't hear any concerns at the legislative hearing, and I, I truly hope that we can work out the differences. There's a lot of bipartisan support. Uh, there's, there, there's many disability 
advocate groups that do support this bill. I know that there's one in particular that just recently came out in opposition. I, I will be talking with them more. I believe that uh, I'm quite disappointed that they've decided to take this position. Uh, there's many who recognize the positives, and this is, this is simply a study. We're, we're just wanting to look at the technical difficulties at the FCC. We're not, so that's the first step to getting where we need to be on this legislation. So I'm committed to working with the advocates for people with disabilities and the rest of the members on this committee to working out a legislative solution so that we can move forward and, and really make a difference on the front lines for those with disabilities. There's been too many examples where where um, we've had incidences that could be avoided if the if the law enforcement officer was aware of who they were dealing with. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield back my time. Gentleman yields back. Uh, anyone on the Democratic side wish to make an opening statement? Seeing none. Uh, any member of the Republican side wish to make an opening statement? Okay. Uh, well, seeing none, that we'll we'll move forward then. So that concludes our opening statements. Pursuant to committee rules, members' written opening statements shall be made part of the record. Please submit any written opening statement to the clerk. Uh, at this time, uh, we will consider, uh, we will begin bill consideration. The chair calls up H.R. 1218, the Data Mapping to Save Moms Lives Act. The, court, uh, the clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 1218 to require the Federal Communications Commission to incorporate data on maternal health outcomes into its broadband health maps. With, a bill without objection, the first reading of the bill will be dispensed with. The bill is now considered as read. Without objection, the bill is considered as read and open for amendment at any point. Are there any members seeking recognition to speak on H.R. 1218? Mr. Chairman, Chief uh, Butterfield. Okay. Uh, Mr. Butterfield, you are recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think I need to offer an amendment in the nature of a substitute. Oh, the gentleman has an amendment? I think that was supposed to be the, the procedure. Okay. The clerk will, report, to offer the, an amendment. Clerk will yes. report the amendment. Amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 1218 offered by Mr. Butterfield of North Carolina. Strike all after the enacting clause and Without the objection, following. the reading of the amendment will be dispensed with. Uh, Mr. Butterfield, you are now recognized for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman Doyle, for your leadership, and, and certainly thank you for your friendship over the years. Uh, I said to my staff when we first read your announcement a few days ago, your shoes would be very difficult to fill, and I just want to publicly thank you for all that you've done for, for all of us. And thank you to, to Chairman Fallone. Frank, you are a great leader, and, and your leadership has been nothing less than stellar. I know you're not leaving, but at least I want to publicly acknowledge the great work that you're doing, and it's been a pleasure uh, to work with you. And to our ranking members, McMorris Rogers and and Ranking Member Latta, thank you, both of you, for your leadership as well. And I look forward to serving alongside both of you in the months and, and years to come. Uh, and thank you to the members of this subcommittee. I see you on the screen. Thank you for recognizing the importance of this bill and choosing to address the maternal mortality crisis in the United States. Our country, unfortunately, is only one of developed nations in the world where the maternal mortality rate continues to rise every year. That's terrible. Even more concerning, the rate of mortality is much higher in minority populations and rural communities, those who most often sit on the wrong side of the di digital divide. And so my bill, Mr. Chairman, the Data Mapping to Save Moms Lives Act focuses on overlaying co connectivity data held by the FCC with health information held by the CDC. Uh, this, this way, policymakers will be able to target, we can target connectivity resources where telehealth may be able to assist medical professionals remotely monitor the health of pregnant women. The bipartisan amendment in the nature of a substitute that I'm offering today, along with, with Gus Bilarakis, my dear friend from Florida, uh, today makes technical corrections to the bill, such as specifying the health outcomes that should be included. And so thank you to Mr. Bilarakis and thank you to Lisa Blunt Rochester, my dear friend from Delaware, uh, for working with me on this important legislation. And so I encourage my colleagues, all of you, to vote yes 
to this bill, which is a step in the right direction to decrease maternal mortality in the United States and to protect our nation's mothers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for yield time. At this time, I will yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on the amendment in the nature of substitute? Mr. Bilirakis, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. For Chairman. Five I'd like to strike the last word on the Ains. I want to take this opportunity, of course, to thank my good friend, Mr. Butterfield. It's been great working with him on this bill and other bills as well. Uh, early last year, the CDC released new maternal mortality rate statistics based on updated recorded uh, information. They discovered that maternal mortality is worse than previously understood, especially for non-Hispanic black women. The Butterfield Bill of Acts bill will utilize this information to better understand how broadband or the lack of broadband intersects with existing maternal mortality data. I also want to thank the committee staff for working on this bill. I really appreciate it. It's very, very important. Uh, they developed the AINS that achieves bipartisan support and provides the clarity the FCC needs to ensure we can incorporate the necessary and readily available maternal health data as quickly and efficiently as possible. Thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure working with Mr. Butterfield. Let's get this done. I appreciate it very much, and I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on the amendment? If there's no further discussion, uh, we will proceed to a vote on the amendment in the nature of a substitute. All those in favor of the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 1218 as amended will signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh, um, aye. Uh, let me restate that. All those in favor of the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 1218 will signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, all and those opposed will signify by but saying no. That's a very in the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The ayes have it. And the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 1218 is agreed to. The question now occurs on favorably forwarding H.R. 1218 as amended to the full committee. All those in favor of forwarding H.R. 1218 as amended to the full committee will signify by saying aye. All those aye. opposed? Any opposed? In the opinion of the chair, the, is, has someone sought recognition? Yeah, Sorry. Okay. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Uh, and and uh, H.R. 1218, as amended, is forwarded to the full committee. Okay. The chair now calls up H.R. 2501, the Spectrum Coordination Act. The court. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 2501, a bill to require the National Telecommunications and Information Administration and the Federal Communications Com Commission to Without update objection, the memorandum. The first reading of the bill will be dispensed with. The bill is now considered as read. Uh, without objection, the bill is considered as read and open for amendment at any point. Uh, the chair recognizes himself uh, to offer an amendment in the nature of a substitute for H.R. 2501. Clerk will report the amendment. Amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 2501 offered by Mr. Doyle of Pennsylvania. Without Rec objection, the uh, reading of the amendment will be dispensed with and chair recognizes himself for five minutes. Uh, my amendment in the nature of a substitute is bipartisan, offered with Mr. Bill Arrakis and seeks to clarify the Memorandum of Understanding Requirements in his bill, H.R. 2501. Colleagues, I am proud to have worked with my good friend, Gus Belarakis, on this AINS. His legislation is an important step forward in ensuring that federal agencies tasked with spectrum management, the FCC and NTIA, remain on track in meeting their respective responsibilities to promote the public interest through the efficient use of spectrum. Our efforts today will help strengthen the relationship between FCC and the NTIA and their management of our nation's spectrum resources. If the U.S. is to remain a leader in the next generation of wireless technology, we must be coordinated and have a consistent, coherent government approach to spectrum management. The Memorandum of Understanding on Spectrum Coordination uh, the, I'm sorry, the Memorandum of Understanding on Spectrum Coordination these agencies currently operate under is from 2003. So, 
Much has changed since then, and it's time for the FCC and the NTIA to revisit their memorandum of understanding with thoughtfulness and intentionality. This AINS just makes a simple change to Mr. Bilirakis's bill by clarifying the three ways the FCC and the NTIA should update their memorandum of understanding. Number one, improving the process for resolving frequency allocation disputes between these agencies. Secondly, ensuring that spectrum is used efficiently. And finally, establishing reasonable timelines in the exchange of information between these agencies. I want to thank Congressman Bilirakis for working with me on this amendment in the nature of a substitute. I'm pleased to join him in this effort. This bill is beneficial not only for our country, but also will help further the United States' ability to remain a leader in spectrum policy on the world stage. For all these reasons, this is an important amendment and a worthwhile bill, and I urge my colleagues to support it. We do not want to repeat the mistakes we saw in previous administration, and this amendment is a step in the right direction, especially once the Senate confirms a full complement of officials at NTIA and the FCC. And with that, I yield back. Uh, is there anyone else that seeks recognition to speak on the um, chair recognizes Mr. Bilirakis for Thank five you, minutes? Chairman. I appreciate it very much. I move to strike the last word. It's been great working with you on this particular bill, Mr. Chairman, and we are going to miss you. I'm going to be the only Bucko fan in the House. What's <laughs> going on here? So uh, I'll carry the load, though, for you. I appreciate it. Consumers benefit when government entities work together to modernize processes and improve efficiency. The agreement governing uh, cooperation between NTIA and the FCC has remained unchanged for 18 years. In the world of technology that is an eternity, uh, and spectrum usage has grown and evolved. 2003, as you said, Mr. Chairman, this bill will solidify what has been learned under the original agreement and build upon it to benefit all federal agencies, licensees, and consumers. Since I filed the underlying bill last Congress, these agencies have begun to improve coordination, and I applaud that. However, this bill will ensure that they get the job done effectively and do it in a reasonable time frame. That's the key, the reasonable time frame, speed up the process. I want to thank the chairman, of course, and the ranking member for agendaing this bill. Uh, and and uh, I thank the chairman for introducing the AINS to provide additional clarity and spectrum coordination timelines between these agencies. I urge support of the AINS and, of course, the underlying bill. And I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. Gentleman yields back. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on the amendment in the nature of a substitute? Mr. Chairman? I'm sorry. Ms. Matsui? Yes, Ms. Matsui. You're recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I move to strike the last word. And first of all, I want to say uh, compliments to your great leadership. Uh, you have really led us through an awful lot, and we have many more issues to deal with, and I look forward to working with you. And let me also say about this Spectrum Coordination Act, uh, I compliment you and uh, uh, Mr. Berlakis for this bill is widely needed. Um, I want to make a few comments here um, regarding this. Shortly after his election, I wrote to then President-elect Biden, urging him to adopt a unified approach to spectrum policy, to develop a clearly articulated process for resolving interagency disputes and to revisit the MOU between the FCC and NTIA. Ensuring the MOU provides a clear framework for the two agencies is an important first step, but it's not the only thing we need to ensure a sufficient spectrum pipeline to win the race for 5G and beyond. As I said in my letter, when spectrum conflicts arise, it is important that all federal agencies involved are aware of administration policy. A well-defined collaborative process will help prevent individual agencies from pursuing policies that benefit themselves alone or that come at the expense of other federal users. I am concerned that the ongoing disputes between federal agencies are again causing uncertainty for both federal and non-federal users of the C-band. Since I introduced the Win 5G Act and the C-band Act with Chairman Doyle, I have been working to get this valuable mid-band spectrum into the hands of 5G innovators. 
Unfortunately, we're starting to see some of the same behavior that plagued the previous administration, combative rather than collaborative posturing between agencies and messy public disputes. I long believe that the FCC has and should continue to have ultimate responsibility for commercial spectrum policy and the NTIA should act as manager of the federal government's use of spectrum. When disputes arise, it should be the career experts at those agencies that work to forge a path forward. I encourage them to work together to ensure concerns that are added in a way that will allow this valuable spectrum to be unleashed. But once again, I also say to uh, Mr. Joel and Mr. Bilakas, this is wonderful to have this MOU and, and the AIMS, and I look forward to working with both of you. And um, Mr. Chairman, I'd also ask unanimous consent to submit my letter to President-elect Biden on the new approach inspection policy into the record, as well as a joint statement from CCA, CTIA, ITI, U.S. Telecom, and WIA on the CBIN. Without and objection, so ordered. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I thank the general lady. Uh, let me just say that I appreciate your remarks and I agree with everything you just said. Uh, let me ask if there is anyone else that wishes to speak on the amendment in the nature of a substitute. No one on the Democratic side, on the Republican side. Okay, if there's no further discussion or amendments, we'll proceed to a vote on the amendment in the nature of a substitute. All those in favor of the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 2501 will signify by saying aye. aye. All those aye. opposed? In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Uh, the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 2501 is agreed to. The question now occurs on favorably forwarding H.R. 2501 as amended to the full committee. All those in favor of forwarding H.R. 2501 as amended to the full committee will signify by saying aye. aye. All those aye. opposed? No one opposed? In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Uh, the uh, H.R. 2501, as amended, is uh, forwarded to the full committee. Uh, without objection, the staff is authorized to make technical and conforming changes to the bills consistent with the actions taken by the subcommittee today. Uh, if there are no further uh, points of business, the subcommittee now stands adjourned. Okay, that was nice and quick. Huh? <laughs> nice,